This Final Cut Pro 10 Tour presentation is brought to you by the LumaForge Share Station, the world's best storage for Final Cut 10. For more information on how the Share Station can improve your workflow, head on over to LumaForge.com. Uh, with this project, my background is in, uh, I started as a writer, I became a producer, I've done a lot of uh, uh, cop shows, but also a lot of stuff that uses like sort of new technology. We did a, you know, I started on Miami Vice as a location scout, so that was like sort of film school for me because they were making movies every week. Uh, then I went and did a cop show that was one of the first shows, uh, the actually first drama series that was shot on a beta cam when they had like three beta cams in a laboratory in, uh, in Tokyo and I talked them into actually giving me one to do this cop show and it worked out really, really well. Uh, after that we did a show for uh, CBS in the United States which was the first, uh, it was a comedy uh, show, a, a, a travel log that was a comedy show, but it was all shot on uh, uh, high 8 cameras, I don't know if you remember high 8 but uh, when we did that one, I remember we showed the pilot to the uh, to the head of the channel, and he thought it looked so good. He thought it was actually beta cam, uh, and he said, "You know, you, this looks really good. Did you shoot it on beta cam?" So no, no, we shot it on high eight cam. We bought in the store, took off the shelf, and he said, "We got a problem." I said, "What's the problem?" He says, "It looks too good. It looks like a movie. Nobody's going to believe it's high eight." And you showed me a show about a guy with a home video camera, so you got to do something. And what we wound up doing was going into post-production, and this is before <coughs> Avid, going frame by frame to degrade the image enough that it looked like what it actually was so that people would believe it. So that was like sort of an eye-opener about the technology and sort of the possibilities. So um, after that, I worked at HBO, and they sent me over to Europe to, to start doing some co-production stuff and wound up working in lots of different countries. Um, the two things prior to this that were interesting, we did one show in Sweden, which was a comedy about a boy and a girl that ran on two channels simultaneously. So one channel, SVT1, was the boy's point of view, and SVT2 was the girl's point of view. Um, and that was before digital and stuff like that. That was really, really interesting because, because of the cameras, because we're using small high eight cameras. You could actually shoot like that. And then I think the last show that I worked on before this one, which gave us the idea for this, was uh, for Discovery uh, and a French channel called RMC Découverte, which is a French documentary uh, channel about the helicopter mountain rescue unit in Chamonix. And that show, you know, it's the first time I did a documentary. I had a really good DP named Pierre, Pierre Bofti, who's won a couple of Academy Awards for, for documentaries. And that show was, was shot, I remember we did the, 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 the sort of tr teaser pilot, which is about 10 minutes, and we shot it on, um, uh, beta cam, some handy cams, and uh, GoPros. And when the channel saw it, they said, you know what, beta cam looks too clean, the handy cam looks good, great everything, so it looks like the GoPros, because the GoPros look great and it's, it's really immediate. And what we did was wind up having 10 GoPros on this helicopter, it was about the helicopter mountain rescue unit in Chamonix, who covers people that are in avalanches and rock slides and stuck on mountains, climbers, stuff like that. Um, and by having these GoPros, we wound up having so much footage it was it was great from an editing point of view because you had so many different points of view the problem was obviously the data management and having all that stuff we did it on final cut 7 and that was the first time i actually understood about workflows the importance of tagging stuff and doing that so the two things i remember were that that whole amount of data and the other thing was the show looked really really good we did a, a to thank everybody in Chamonix, did a screening in a movie theater with this show, which was like 80% shot on GoPros. And when I saw it, was a DCP copy. When I saw it up on the screen, I was just amazed because it looked like it was a film. And this is mainly the GoPros. So, you know, that sort of gave us an inkling that there's a whole other way of doing documentaries that let you have more coverage and more, you know, more dynamic because you got more choice in the edits and stuff like that. And when we started talking about what else we could do that way, we landed on firemen because there's not a lot of shows, not a lot of series about firemen, mainly because you can't send a cameraman into a fire with a fireman because it's dangerous. But you can stick a GoPro or you can stick a, you know, and w w which brought me to a discussion with the director of photography who said, I'd explained to him, I'd been talking to Apple about doing a, a show on an iPhone back when the iPhones were still pretty crude. And he said, well, you know, we could shoot on GoPro, but you can shoot on an iPhone as well. I was working with a director who'd shot some stuff in the New York Fire Department. So while they were shooting normally with a red and a beta cam, stuff like that, I just sort of snuck off and did some stuff with an iPhone just to see if it worked. And this is, I'll show you two clips. I won't show you three because I don't want to bore you, but okay. this was the first one we did. Can't see nothing in front of me. Can't see nothing coming up behind. Make my way through this darkness. 
And I feel nothing but this chain that binds me I lost track of how far I've gone How far I've gone, how high I've climbed On my back's a 60 pound stone On the shoulder hit my seems like these are very hard conditions to work in. It's probably, you know, when we got to Marseille, what we found out, it's probably the hardest uh, conditions you can work on something because like of the safety things, because of the fire. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, that, that doesn't really matter. It's, it's yeah, probably the best way to, to figure out how this stuff works. So just off of the thing that we did in New York, you know, what we, we used that actually to show to the French Channel. We'd done the mountain rescue thing for, and they were really interested. Because the thing about Marseille, what's interesting is that it's the largest port in the Mediterranean, so it's actually the uh, firemen there are part of the French Navy. So that it's not just regular urban fires, it's everything, air, sea, rescue, anything that happens in the port, anything that happens with the shipping, anything, you know, any accidents on the beach and stuff like that. Plus, because Marseille is surrounded by natural, national parks, uh, they have a lot of forest fires. They've had three big forest fires this year. So as a, as a, as, as a subject, it's great because it gives you more than just, you know, urban, urban fire and stuff like that. Plus, you know, the work those guys do, it's just, it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, it really is sort of fascinating guys putting their lives at risk. So how, how do you organize all these things? You know? you know, the big thing is you generate an enormous amount of rushes, you know, 15, 20 hours a day, something like that. So, you know, the big difference between when we did the show in Chamonix, which is on seven and now with Final Cut 10 is that ability to tag and to archive and to organize so that you can access this stuff. It's like, you know, the gentleman before said that, you know, putting that work up in front to, to log it is, you know, makes a big, big difference. And just actually being here the last couple of days talking to the guys from Lumberjack and, you know, looking at the other stuff that you guys are doing for plugins and apps, it, it just blindingly apparent to me that's just become easier and easier on the on the workflow side. We were lucky enough to, to get an indie uh, that the guys from Luma Forge lent us, that they actually uh, borrowed back from Apple, I think. So, <laughs> so you know, we're really happy to have that. And uh, uh, Francois Xavier, who's here, if you want to talk to him about workflow, he can answer those questions because he installed the workflow for us. It was designed by Martin Gosset, yeah. who's uh, uh, a sort of an expert about this kind of stuff. And Ronnie's been sort of helping us uh, 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 technically on that. But I'll, I'll show you the, the clip from what we did from Marseille because the other thing is from, from just from the point of view of shooting with the iPhones, it was 
you know, it was an eye opener because it's not just a question of the quality, you know, with with the right sort of uh, a, a camera apps, you know, we've been working with Filmic Pro and with Mavis and uh, the Mavis app, which, you know, makes your, makes your iPhone work like a cinema camera. It, it actually gives amazing results. But the other thing that's really, for me, uh, uh, sort of as a director and as a producer, is the fact that you can you can you know you can get a gimbal that works like a Steadicam. We've got a lightweight crane that fits into a backpack. You know you can you can go underwater with the right. You know, we use I think the Optrix housings. There, there's so many things you can do that you can't do with a normal camera. You know the other thing is you know we've got probably 15 cameras. We've had scenes where we can line up eight or ten cameras at the same time and get an event like we were doing things with uh, where they uh, winch guys down from a helicopter onto a moving boat and to shoot something like that with one camera versus having ten cameras in different positions with two or three cameramen it just gives you a richness that's you know really really more cinematic than it is uh, uh, than it is you know doing a normal documentary so I think the best thing to do is let me show you the second clip sure So it's totally amazing doing all this. Did, did you do the uh, slow motions in Final Cut Pro Ten as well? Every yeah, everything's everything's just off. But look, everything with with that stuff is just all Apple. You know, it's Final Cut except for Mavis, which is the the camera app, which yes, you know, like absolutely. I said, works really really well. But you know, the, I mean, the thing is, for me, having an iPhone when you're using it to shoot, it's it's like a Swiss Army knife. Yeah. You know, it's got slow motion, it's got time lapse. No, it's <laughs> visually, really, it, it, it is. It's just it's it's amazing. The only, to be honest with you, the only problem we had is after after a couple of months of shooting, because there's no uh, digital. Oh, sorry, the zoom is digital. It's not optical. It was a problem because to get in close to fires. You don't want your cameramen walking up this close because <laughs> it's sort of dangerous to get close ups of people. It's sort of, you know, so we've, we've sort of for the moment we switched to a hybrid system, uh, you know, using some SLRs and stuff like that. But now because the new, you know, it's like I got, I got my Christmas wish, the new sevens have, uh, you know, a digital zoom or something that works. And we've been working with Zeiss. They've got a new range of lenses that they're bringing out that work with iPhones. So. You know, uh, the, the two things for, for any kind of projects for me, because I've got a fiction background, it's always, it's, it's the, the story, and, and from a visual point of view, it's all about the optics, it's all about the lenses and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, the functionality that this has, uh, plus the portability, it's, it's a, it makes a big difference. The other thing is for me that it, it the two more things. One is, in terms of you know, in the documentary space, dealing with people, you know, like I say, we, we've shot stuff where if a guy comes in with a beta cam, people have a natural reaction to sort of say that, you know, somebody's filming me. When you're working with with these things, you know, everybody's got a, a, an iPhone in their pocket. Nobody's got a Sony or a mm -hmm. you know SLR in their pocket. They're used to you know, there's a familiarity and there's an ease that people are more comfortable when you shoot like this, which is it's just a bonus. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing for us was 
the fact that it's it's it they're they're you know you can you can put these anywhere you want you can use 10 of them you can you know and you can put this places that you can't put a camera mm -hmm. a regular camera a beta something like that and it takes so much less time to do that that you know for me what's interesting is it changes you know from an editing point of view because i started as an editor you know uh, for me editing is is like writing with pictures instead of words and the fact that you can use, you know, you get a richer vocabulary by using this because you can use more of them. You can use them in ways you've never used them before. For me, it's a game changer, not just in the documentary space, but also for fiction because I think it'll make fiction, you know, it, it, it'll change the way you shoot. Be, you know, a couple of reasons. One is you can shoot better. You know, you can use gimbals like steady cams. You can use cranes. You can use slow motion. You can use drones. So mm -hmm. from a visual point of view, it gives you a richness that, you know, you don't normally have if you shoot the regular way. And it doesn't cost as much. The other thing is, uh, you, know, I, I, it, you know, more and more, it's a generational thing, but, you know, the younger the audience you have is, the more likely they're watching their shows on this rather than on this. And so I think the idea, you know, I, I, I think it, uh, it, you, could, you could do regular production and do stuff that's, you know, short of historical dramas, looks as good as regular primetime stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think there'll be a resistance because people are invested in a technology that's a little bit older, that's a little bit, you know, more set. But I think younger and younger sort of filmmakers and, and programmers and stuff like that will start to work with this more and more. So for me, I think short form kids, stuff like that is sort of the thin end of the wedge. But mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a new, for me, it's like a new paradigm because it lets you use words that didn't exist before from a visual point of view, lets mm -hmm. you do things with cameras that you've never been able to do before. And, you know, that's, for me, that's, as a filmmaker, that's really exciting. Now to make that work, not to give a plug for Luma Forge and Final Cut, but it's true. It just makes it that much easier mm -hmm. to put this stuff together from a documentary point of view. Like I say, having the access to say Pierre on the truck at night and boom, it's there. You know, from an editing point of view, it's 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 a gift. It really is a gift. How many people are working on this project right now? We've um, on the shooting side, we've got I think four crews that work daily. We've got two directors, mm -hmm. one of whom works as a redacteur en chef. So the you know the the directors it's Nicolas Moscara who's done a lot of stuff in France with GoPros and stuff yeah. like that very well respected director, and a guy named Patrick Dedol yeah. who's the uh, uh, the other director and the redacteur en chef and you know they've they've got a like sort of uh, news documentary background uh, reportage in France but they you know they both like sort of looked at the technology and looked at the possibilities and they've really gone with it they run with it because you know like I say it's it's. It's not rare, but it's 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 nice to have a technology that lets you use your imagination and do stuff nobody's done before. That's why I bring up the example about the two channel show because I directed the first few episodes, and I always remember I would call friends and say, "What do we do in this?" And they'd say, "What are you doing?" I said, "Well, this show on two channels," and they go, "Like, are you out of your mind? Nobody, you know, we've never. I, I can't I can't help you because because we haven't done that before." And with this, it's a little bit of the same thing, except that you know the results you get are just. It's for me. It's mind blowing because yeah. it's you know if you don't tell people they don't know. You could show somebody that you know we go to the network and they, if you told them mm -hmm. we shot that on beta and uh, look there's a stutter because it's a clip off a clip but you know when you see it you know native it's just it looks as good as something you shoot in any other way. I think you started this production you know uh, logging all stuff uh, on with local drives. Yeah. Then you switch to the uh, indie to the share station. Yeah. Did that make? really make a big difference? Yeah, it just accelerated everything. It made it a lot easier. You know, the thing for us is we're working with four stations. So somebody's logging, uh, somebody's putting the packages together. So it's like almost having a pre-edit with the, with, the, with the footages, with the incidents, because, mm -hmm. you know, we're doing 12 times 45 episodes, which is an enormous amount of organization, mm -hmm. you know, from a, story, a storytelling point of view, to have sequences sort of pre-packaged so you know how to balance and use things in episodes so that you're not, you know, you, you shared it out, you know, uh, equally because you don't want to be too loaded in one episode. It just makes it, you know, that much easier. And the other station is for the photographers and the directors that can come in, look at the stuff from a specific day, look at the stuff they've shot, seen it, talk about it. The one other thing I said that for me, which is really interesting, is we have an Apple TV. So a lot of the time when they come in with the cameras before they even load it, they said, I did this shot, I did that shot. You just all right, come here, boom, you put it on Apple TV and you can see it right away which is you know it, it, there's just every time you do this there's so many things you discover that just make it easier and neater and 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 really you know just really fun i think honest. it's amazing and um i'm sure we heard 
more about this project in, yeah. the, in the future. Um, so let's keep it to this and sure. we'll talk again in the later uh, right. show. Um, thank you, Stephen. Give a hand to Stephen. And... Thank you.